Welcome back to the ISO Podcast. I'm your host, G2. Today, our special guest is Miss Gray. Hey, everyone. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to be here. So, my first question is going to be real simple, real easy, is how, how was your day? It's, we're, we're at the end of the day, mind you guys. We're, this is sixth period, and um, it's after school and everything. I'm just double-checking and see. How was your day? Um, it was uh, pretty fantastic, actually. A lot, yeah. of, a lot of positive things going on today, so... Really liked it, and it's a great way to end the day watching you guys do this and being a part of it. So it's really cool. Glad to have you a part of it. So, for those who do not know, Miss Gray actually won Teacher of the Year, I believe. So, um, how was that? How was that feeling? How winning Teacher of the Year for you know SJ and everything? Yeah, it's pretty. It's humbling. To be honest, it's super humbling. Like I, I don't know. I just come and I do my best every day for the kids and try to uh, be the best version of myself every day. And um, yeah, definitely. It was a humbling experience. Like when they walked in, I think for probably the first time in my entire life, I was actually speechless. Like, I, oh, wow. like nothing would come out. So yeah, it was it's really cool and humbling. And I thank everybody that like all the teachers that have supported me, all the administration, the district, the kids, yeah. um, fantastic students here. So the AVID program, I love it. That's what's up. We're glad to have you part of the community. She's a very bubbly, very nice, sweet teacher. She'll get the job done and everything. It's all nice. Um, what would you say as, like, what would you say inspired you to become a teacher? Um, interestingly enough, I had a, an amazing teacher when I was a kid named Mr. Mongo. And, um, and he was a science teacher. And he was just, he was awesome. And he was bubbly. And he was actually a national teacher of the year candidate. And he oh, was wow. a state teacher of the year. And, uh, yeah, he always treated, um, all of everybody in the classroom. It was a time where I think like guys and girls were still treated pretty differently in the classroom. Right. Um, and from a science standpoint, I remember like him actually making us ladies also feel like we could be scientists if that's what we wanted. And so, uh, that's nice. yeah, I loved him and, um, he always, yeah, just a, a good guy, good person and always motivating and inspirational and treating treating people right so that's definitely something i took from him that's what's up i feel like a lot of teachers um actually some teachers they 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 take that side of their job like the uh the more heartfelt and kind and warm side of their job very seriously because that is important like when it comes to communicating with people or trying to teach someone something you have to bring about new ways of how and how to teach them and stuff like that because not everybody learns the same Absolutely. Um, yeah, that's I try to do a whole bunch of different things in the classroom um, to try and get people involved and just see, you know, what are their strengths? Because I have some people like yourself that right. are very good speakers. They have no problem uh, talking to people and doing that. And I have some kids that are like a little bit more anxious. So it's like, OK, we're going to start here right. and see if we can move you to Slowly. that point. Yeah. yeah. Um, so that's uh, definitely a challenge, but it's it's kind of what makes everything really great, too, because when you start to see that breakthrough, um, it's it yeah you're just like wow like yeah. doing it it makes you it makes me like a proud parent again I have my own kids but yeah that's definitely a proud parent here too <laughs> that's that's nice that's really lo lovely to hear that so what would you say uh, for your your journey to becoming a teacher was the most difficult thing um I, I don't know like I, I guess having the courage to actually do it like, I got a kinesiology degree, and I thought I was going down that path um, to be a physical therapist. All right. Uh, and I enjoyed that, but then I just, uh, you know, I was coaching field hockey, oh, actually nice. at, the, at the Olympic Training Center in San Diego. Oh, and yeah, and I had some kids cool. go like, uh, well, shouldn't you, you should be a teacher, because like, we can talk to you, and you'll get, get the point, but you won't just yell at us. I'm like, exactly. Right, well. Yeah, and so... Then I kind of was like, you know what? And I went back to thinking about Mr. Mongovan and how as a kid, like I, I did think about teaching and then right. decided, all right. I went home and I told my husband, I'm like, yeah, by the way, I'm going to start a teaching career, which means I'm going to work like six months without getting paid. And he's like, ooh, ooh are you sure that's a, that's a good idea? Yeah. And I said, yes, it is. And he's like, all right, like I'll support you or we'll, we'll scrape by. So that that's kind of how it all started and has not been a day yet where... I have regretted that. I love every moment of this job. So. A lot of people can't say that nowadays. A lot of people jump into jobs they don't know or uh, feel a little iffy about, don't enjoy, which a lot of teachers do get into jobs like that or get into the teaching job without liking it or loving it. 
And I feel like if you don't like, if you don't love or like your job, it's not something that you can do for free for the rest of your life, then you shouldn't do it. A hundred percent agree. Um, I, you know, I tell kids kind of the same thing in class, like make sure um, that what you're choosing is something that you see yourself like doing, like it's that you love to do. Exactly. Like I really feel like um, this is a purpose and a passion. You know, I started off as a PE teacher and at that point that was a purpose and a passion and lots of coaching and all those involvements. Um, But then uh, Miss Miller uh, introduced me to Avid and from there I was like, oh man, this is a ton more work for yeah. the same amount of money, but I just loved it. And watching the kids grow and seeing kids go off to college nice. and getting like little updates here and there from them, um, a quick text, email, or Snapchat, like and when they're all older going, hey, I'm doing this, or even seeing some kids back on campus or at other jobs. So that's, that's, that's the coolest part. That's what's up. So we're going to take it back to the roots. Where is Miss Gray from? <laughs> I am from uh, San Marcos, California. So I went to San Marcos High School, um, and I played three sports there. Wow, what three sports did you play? Um, I played field hockey, uh, softball, and nice. basketball. Nice. And so, yeah, and I was pretty pretty successful at that. Um, I was athlete of the year at my high school. Um, got a lot of awards in the county, in San Diego County. Um, okay. and, I, and I was able to play and, and take a, a full ride field, field hockey scholarship to University of Michigan. Ooh. So, yeah, that was um, that was definitely a cool thing. You nice. Know? That's what's up. So what would you say is your the, the thing that you enjoyed uh, the most during that whole process of just wanting to become a teacher? I guess, like, uh, the growth, like, experiencing certain growth through it. And, and some of it was hard, like, you know, tests. And so I think it's like um, that up and down roller coaster ride where right. you're kind of like, oh, something great happens. You're like, yeah, awesome. And then you get to that point where there's that climb. And then, oh, you got to take more classes. Oh, I don't care. Your degree was from University of Michigan. You got right. to take this class and that class and this test. And I didn't pass some of the tests. Like, some of them were super hard. Right. Um, like, at first, I found that I wanted to teach anatomy, physiology, because I love the science stuff. And then, right. You know, all the tests that that took, I was like, yeah, this is, uh, I don't, this must not be meant to me because it's not happening, right? Like, right. And so I think it's that challenge. And, and that's why I try to tell students, like, good things are hard. Yes. And when people ask you to work hard and they have that expectation, sometimes people take it, oh, they're mean or they don't, you know, they don't understand. And it's not always that. Uh, sometimes it's just hard things make amazing people. Right. There's this, uh, actually, uh, I think it was maybe my freshman year or my sophomore year. I was writing a paper in um, my English class with uh, Ms. Shepler, yep. my honors class. And we were writing a paper. I can't remember exactly what it was about, but <clears throat> one of these, uh, I, I think it was a quote that I kind of came up with. It was, uh, besides the obstructions in the road, I'll continue down the path of continuance. I think that's what I said. And pretty much putting it in the simpler terms for everyone is uh, besides like everything that you face or the things that you go through when you're on your journey to becoming what you want to become in life, you'll continue to, to keep going through with it and follow through with it. Absolutely. Especially if it's something that, you know, uh, I feel like it's like a purpose. Like I feel like every, everybody, um, regardless of, of faith and religious beliefs and all that, I feel like everybody here, all students, everybody has a purpose. Right. Um, and we may not have any idea what that purpose is and just to try and move towards things that you like to do. And yeah, like things that you're like, Oh, I like this so much. Like, yeah, I would do it for free or it doesn't really feel like a job. Right. I mean, right. I know what I do is a job and I know I work really hard and, and those types of things. But at the same time, there's so much like enjoyment that I get throughout my day that it d- doesn't always feel that way. It doesn't feel like work. It <laughs> no. just feels like something you're doing that you enjoy doing, which is like one of the main things you should look for in your uh, your dream job. I mean, if it's a lot of people have a dream job that's uh, that they envision of doing, uh, maybe I don't know, working in a pastry shop or uh, construction or something. But if that job feels like work and it doesn't feel like something that you can do all the time or just enjoy, that might not be the job for you. A lot of people don't understand that, but. Um, is there anyone that you can say that you do this job specifically for besides your teachers? Anyone that you can say you do this job for? Um, I just the kids. 
Like, I, you know, I, I was really blessed growing up. You know, I had both parents at home. My dad made really good money. Um, so I had a lot of I had a lot of advantages and a lot of blessings that came my way. And I think um, I have friends that weren't always so lucky. Right. Um, and I, I did I did have a lot of teachers that were awesome um, that kind of helped along that and coaches. And I think it's just that whole idea of like it does take a village, yes. uh, especially at what everybody goes through now and all the distractions that, that young people have. It really takes a village. It takes a lot of people in your corner. Um, and the more positive you are and and allow people to be in that corner, the more they're going to help you out. Because, exactly. you know, you notice positive things on campus. 100%. And, yeah. For me as a teacher, I always notice like and I try to to recognize kids when positive things are going down. I'm like, hey, I saw you do that. That was awesome. Thank you for that. And it can be something small as picking up trash mm -hmm. or something big as that helping somebody out. Right. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing, like be kind to one another. This is a crazy world. Yeah. And uh, human kindness is more important than anything. So yeah. be kind and, and appreciate one another. It doesn't mean you got to be best friends. Right. It doesn't mean you have to agree about everything. Exactly. You know, but definitely uh, be kind to one another. That's nice. Well, that it's very true. Being kind to everybody as much as you can, or or uh, just treating people how you want to be treated, is like yeah. such a huge thing. I don't people. I don't think people understand that. Like, if you want to act rude or mean or malicious to everyone all the time, like think about how if somebody were to do that to you every single day, all the time, twenty four seven, that wouldn't be something that you'd enjoy doing. So that uh, treat everyone like how you want to be treated. That I can I can vouch for that for sure. Um, so you're teaching now. How long do you want to be teaching for? Is there anything you want to do afterwards? Like, you know, anything like that? I, you know, I don't know. Like, I get people all the time, you know, do you want to do this forever? What, how old are you going to be? I, I don't know. Um, all I know is I'm going to do it as long as I absolutely love it. Um, and that's, you know, the best thing. I mean, I do have little, like, little things I'd like to do. There's things that I throw around that I'm like, man, that would be fun. But in terms of teaching, like, I want to do it until I feel like, I'm not supposed to do it anymore, if that makes sense, until I'm called, you know, somewhere else. Right. Um, but right now, I plan on being here. And my daughter's 26 almost. She just oh, got nice. she got married a couple of years ago. So I guess, you know, right. grandkids might play a portion of that eventually. I don't right. know. But as of like today, um, I, I don't know. I, easy another 10 years like yeah. I don't, I don't, that's I what's what up. I do. So. That's, that's what's up. I'm glad it's like that much love into the job. But... There, what if somebody said before you even became a teacher that you can't do your dream job? Like, there's no possible way you can do your dream job. What would you do? I mean, there's plenty of people that say things all the time that right. said things even, yeah, before I taught or even, you know, when I was playing field hockey, oh, you know, you're not, you're not going to get a scholarship. You're not going to be able to get a full ride, you know, like discouraging. I mean, I think no matter who you are, there's always haters. Yeah. You know, and I, and you can be the nicest person and you can be the best athlete and all those things. There's always somebody that's going to that's yes. going to come for it. And yeah. I think it's just a matter of understanding that, you know, with that going on, there's always a bunch of people behind you to support you. Um, and even at school, like when we have students that struggle with certain things, I try to let them know, hey, like or your teachers are here. Like I'm here to support you and help you. Right. You know. Yes, the journey is going to be tough. You know. I have kids. Oh, military or yeah. it's great. Should I do military or should I do college or should I? You know. And right. I'm like, okay, keep those options open and of let's course. see as we go. Don't like just jump one way or the other. Exactly. Let's see what's going to work out best for you as those things come. Don't close any doors. Right. Keep everything open and. And see what comes in, and right. then sit down and and have a conversation with your parents and um, and with whoever else you want me to be there. You know, let's figure out what is best for you. Because right. uh, at the end of the day, it's not your parents' job; it's yours. Yeah. Um, I think I I don't know if my parents. I think my dad, you know, was really proud, and he'd be really proud today. Um, but I don't I don't think my mom was like, "What? Like you want to do that? Why? You know?" Right. So I don't know. I think there's always going to be people that would be like, why are you doing what you do? Why do you do what you do? Yeah. You know? And and who cares? Like, it's about that fulfillment. And stay away from the, all the social media stuff. That doesn't mean anything. Not anything at all. People think that's their do-all, say-all situation. They always have to be involved with it or, you know, be in the realm of it. I mean, my line of work, I'm 
always involved with it regardless so yeah i'm definitely going to be dealing with it a lot i've already dealt with some of the things that a lot of people deal with when it comes to this content creating side of the world but i mean it's it's all in the beauty of the struggle i love it yeah absolutely and that's the best attitude to have um that those challenges are always going to come your way but when you uh when you face those in a positive way you know, people are going to see that kind of person that you are. Right. And that makes you much more employable, makes you much more likely to have awards and recognition at school, to be a part of something right. um, bigger than yourself. You know, yeah. something purpose, uh, purposeful and, and creates amazing an amazing life for you, you know? Yeah, of course. So as a teacher, what is one of the most, uh, one of the best memories you have besides winning that award this year? Because I know that's definitely something that's, <laughs> super high up in the ranks, but would be another thing, whether it's a student or another teacher, you know, something like that. Uh, I think a little bit of everything. Like, I, I well, I'll just go to yesterday, right. you know, like a little bit discouraged at the end of the day, just, you know, stuff, kind of looking at some grades going, man, I got to get these freshmen going. Right. And, um, you know, as soon as I left, it was pretty cool. Like uh, Josh Ramirez, shout out, uh, he does Tiger Den. Oh, nice. Yeah, and so he invited me to go by there. Right. Um, so I usually do a run after school, at least a couple of days a week, and so I, I jog over there. Yeah. yeah, I do see you sometimes. So I, so I went over there, and like immediately that little bit of oh man, feeling just like I said, nothing bad, just a little bummed that grades weren't better, but right. looking and and watching all these kids working together. Um, and I was just like, yeah, like it just made me feel so good you know, realizing true. all the great things. And then uh, I did that, did a little running and ended up out to soccer. Uh, right. Shout out girls soccer, right? Yes, yeah, shout out them. <laughs> and I got to talk to Mr. Gallegos and uh, he had me talk to the team. And that was really cool because around there I look and there's my like my avid kids, mm -hmm. you know, and, and not only the young ones, I have a couple, uh, one, two, two freshmen on varsity, but then the older ones too. Oh. And I was like, man, you guys, like, trust these older kids are amazing young ladies and they're amazing people to right. look up to. Yes. And I think, like, just all those kind of experiences um, and being able to, even if it's, like, a little bit of a rough day, everybody has little little spots or a little day where you're like, man, I wish I would have gone better. Right, um, of Yeah, it was cool to be able to go around and I can always find something here. Like, even if it's, you know, I never have days where I'm like, I don't want to do this. I love what I get to do. But any love day that. where, yeah, and anytime there's like just that little like, oh, man, I need a run, right? right. I, need, I need a run and I need a mental health run, right? Yeah. Then I can look around and there's always somebody doing something cool. Um, and that's a nice part. And, and it's cool when I know the kids, but it's even cool when I don't. Yeah. Um, you know, Josh had a, there's some kids over there and, and Mr. Sprague's obviously helping, but um, there are several kids in there I didn't know. I'm like, you guys, this is amazing. Like, it's just, yeah. it's really cool to have a lot of things. And this is amazing what you guys do. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You try. So you I try. love this. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. it sounds like you have at least, at least one hobby that you do outside of school that can keep you on track and keep you, keep your mind a little clear and stuff. Is there any other hobbies that you enjoy doing outside of school? Well, I coach mountain bike. So I do, I do very much enjoy oh, mountain bike. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, do you, so you coach, um, like Connor. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, okay. they're amazing. Yeah, yeah. That's Pete, my guy. Connor, yeah, amazing guys. Um, and shout out, you know, uh, Coach Wood, he's awesome. Yep. And Coach Norman. And so it's cool because I'm just kind of like an assistant there. I've been a head coach of a lot of different things, but it's right. nice to just kind of be in that assistant role and just help kids out, get on the bike, just say, hey, what do you guys want me to do today? You know, right. planning, just get out and enjoy the time outside and hanging with the kids and, and having fun on the bike, you know. And so I do a lot of that um outside of school and then you know just hanging with my husband he's um we've been married 29 years so that's Ooh, awesome nice yeah nice that's and then a... uh right now he's not working because um i told him you know I, you supported me through all this i'm making a little extra right now for you to do what you want to do and he's actually becoming a teacher too nice so yeah so he wants to be a special ed teacher so he that's finished nice. his degree now he's just working on the credential so what? It's, yeah, that's so that's been up. amazing. Yeah, that's what's up. A lot of people feel like they have to because I remember you just said that you uh, you you go out to practices sometimes and you just ask them what they want to do and just go ahead first into it. A lot of people feel like they have to have everything planned out all the time, twenty four seven. But I feel like it's sometimes best if you just go with the flow of things. Yeah, especially what you're doing. I mean, obviously, 
you know, with teaching, you have to have a plan. Yeah, of course. <laughs> That's of course, yeah. Otherwise you're in trouble. But um, <laughs> I think, yeah, but you, I think uh, one of the, the skills that has gotten me far in my life in many different areas is adaptation and just being able to realize no matter like what happens that you can adapt and handle it. Right. Like you have to be good on your feet. And I think that that's important for kids to know, like plans are plans, but they're, you know, and you want to have that loose plan, but also realize that things change. And sometimes yeah. it's no fault of our own. No. It just, I don't know. I always kind of see it as, okay, I were, it wasn't meant to be. I wasn't supposed to go that path. Right. I was supposed to go a different path. Right. Um, and so that's how you kind of just have to be able to take disappointments and strides uh, and realize that at the end of the day, like you're going to be where you're supposed to be and to definitely take advantage of that, but enjoy life. Of course. You only get one shot. Exactly. Do stuff you love, be around people you love, um, and, you know, be, be blessed, you know, yes. and, and grateful for, for what you have. 100%. So this camera right here, would you like to say anything to anyone? Or actually, no, this camera right here, this is yours. Would you like to say anything to the people that were for your motivation or anything that you've uh, that you've been told in your life that you feel like they should know? Oh gosh, there's lots of motivation. If you're in my class, you know me, so this comes out a lot. Um, I, you know, I guess my biggest thing is always just be the best version of yourself every single day. And yeah, you get tired. I get tired, right. but that doesn't stop us, right? That's not going to stop me. And if you really want what you want in life and, um, you know, it, it's there. Like yeah. your opportunities are, it's really limitless. Always. Like people put limits and they have, but I have this, but I have that. So, okay. Yeah. I dealt with anxiety before. Right. I've dealt with stuff like, don't think your teachers haven't. Right. Um, but at the end of the day, are you going to limit you? Um, mm. Are you going to define are you going to let that define you? Exactly. Or are you going to define it? Because I could have I could have sat at home and when I had the anxiety and, and let it define me. Right. And and there was a, probably a couple of weeks and I actually did. Like I just let right. it like, OK, like and I realized this is not going to help um, that you got to hit stuff like head on and you got to define it. Because yes. otherwise, all of us, there's not one person that's not going to face a struggle. Exactly. Um, and so even when you look at other people's life, oh, their life's so perfect. They're so happy. They're still struggling. Something. Um, right. So I think it's important that everybody knows that people struggle and that just don't let it get to you. Right. Like, take it and move forward. And move forward, of course. You know, dawning of a new day. Yeah. Every day I get up and I'm like, yes. Yes. Dawning of another beautiful day. Exactly. So I think that's the biggest thing is don't do things that limit you. And that's, you know, we do a lot of that. Um, people do drugs, alcohol, uh, you know, all kinds of unhealthy ways that they limit the, themselves because of stress or because they think it's going to make them feel better. Yeah. A good run, a good yeah, mountain a good bike run, ride, yep. maybe like dancing to some music, all those things, even skateboarding. Yeah. Man, that is such a healthy way to get rid of some of those um, things that you might feel hold you back or those frustrations that, that we all get. Right. So I guess that's my, my, my best words of advice that's is, uh, yeah, don't let things limit you. So, be limitless. Well, we appreciate Ms. Gray for coming on today and shedding some light on her career, her past, and what's going on in the future and giving you guys a little bit of motivation to keep going on what you're doing now. And uh, it was great having you on. Thank you. I, I, I love being here. This is really no problem. Fun. We might have this guest back again. It was that good. <laughs> you guys have a good one. Um, it's your host, Gable, with uh, Ms. Gray, and we'll see you.